Hey, what's up guys? Joe Robert here. Well, maybe I shouldn't say guys. Females make up 23% of the audience here. So what's up people? That's better. Also, over 70% of you guys that are watching my videos are not subscribed. So hit that red button that says subscribe, hit that bell, all that stuff. And you can see all of the print on demand videos that I upload every single week. And today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to tell you the reasons why you should not use Shopify for your print on demand business. And I know what some of you guys are thinking. You're gonna say, Joe, like you made a video last week where all you talked about was why Shopify was the best place to start a print on demand business. If you haven't checked that video out, the link uh, I will put it down in the description where I made my case for why I think Shopify is the best place for anybody to start a print-on-demand business it's an opinion that I still have uh, but I think the conversation is interesting so in this video today we're going to look at some of the reasons why Shopify might not be a good fit for you and my hope is that by breaking down some of these reasons about why you shouldn't use Shopify is that some of you uh, will come to the realization that maybe Shopify is the best place and maybe some of these reasons why you shouldn't use Shopify actually aren't that big of a deal. And like I said, I do think some of these reasons have a lot of merit. I think some of these reasons are genuine reasons why Shopify might not be a good fit for you. At the end of this video today, I'll sort of compare uh, the overall strategies between using a site like Redbubble or Amazon Merch compared to opening up a Shopify store to sell print on demand products. Anyway, if you guys are new to my channel, uh, what's up, Joe Robert here. Uh, I make a bunch of print on demand content like this. I also have a free print on demand course down in the description. Uh, so if you guys want some step-by-step -step training to open your store on Shopify, you can check that out. I also have a print on demand Facebook group with about 20,000 members and I'd love to uh, get to know you a little bit more, uh, so check out the group. The link is down in the description. Today we're going to be looking at some of the comments that were made on the video that I uploaded last week. What about customer support? Does Redbubble and Teespring handle that for you? Yes, if you open a store on Redbubble or if you're selling on Teespring or even Amazon, they will handle all of your customer support. This means that you don't have to spend any time dealing with those pesky customers or answering silly questions about your products or anything like that. What I like about Redbubble and Merch by Amazon is that they handle printing and shipping. This also means that if somebody buys from you and they want to make a return, that you don't have to deal with them at all. They will just reach out to the customer support at the platform that you are selling on and they will handle the return for you. So as a beginner, you don't have to do any customer service at all. And so I wanna ask, is this a good thing? And is this something that should actually dissuade you from starting a store on Shopify? If you're someone who just wants to upload a bunch of random designs and uh, have someone else handle your customer service, then I guess that option would probably be the best fit for you. But if you're interested in building a brand, right, you're probably gonna have to talk to your customers at some point, right? You're probably interested in eventually setting up email marketing or growing a community on Instagram where you are an active part of your brand. And if you're doing something like Redbubble or Merch by Amazon or Teespring, you're just losing that ability to actually connect with your customers. You're actually not building your brand, you're actually building Teespring's brand. All you're doing is uploading your own products to those platforms and then letting them handle everything and then in return you make just a little bit of profit. I have tried Facebook ads and never got any sales. You have to know how to do Facebook ads and targeting and plus you need to have a sizable budget. This person left this comment uh, in reference to what I'm assuming to be the potential organic traffic that you're going to get if you sell on Amazon or if you sell on Redbubble or Teespring. When you are selling on these platforms, you do get organic traffic, you do. But the question is how much, right? In order to actually make a massive amount of money, you're gonna need either a ton of products or you're gonna need hundreds of visitors daily on your product. Let's say that you have a product and it converts at 5%. That means that 5% of the people that view it actually buy it. That means that if you wanna make five sales per day, you're gonna have to have 100 visitors. And maybe he's right. Maybe you can get hundreds of visitors per day on your product. 
products. So I decided to Google something. I simply went on Google and I typed in Teespring organic traffic. And the results that I got was someone saying that Teespring is not a actual great source for organic traffic. And honestly, I think when it comes down to it, in order to be successful, and this is what I'm going to break down at the end of the video, if you are relying solely on organic traffic through some of these platforms, the only way that you're truly going to be able to take advantage of that is if you have literally hundreds of products uploaded to those platforms. If that is your goal, if you are a designer and you can crank out designs like that, then by all means, start one of these stores on one of these platforms, upload a whole bunch of designs, and then just rely on the organic traffic to make your sales. I think the bigger point in his comment here is the fact that he said, I tried Facebook ads and didn't make any sales. And I think a lot of people say stuff like this, that they tried something and it didn't work and therefore the whole strategy should never be used. You could say the same thing for weight loss. I tried to lose weight and it didn't work. Or I tried to invest in stocks and it didn't work. Or I tried to grow vegetables and it didn't work. If you are simply just throwing seeds in the ground in a random spot and in that soil there's a whole bunch of rocks and bugs and maybe every time something grows a little animal comes by and eats it, you're not going to get the results that you want. The same is true with Facebook ads. You should not view your Facebook ad account like a slot machine where you put some money in, pull the lever and hope for the best. You have to remember that this is actual ad advertising. These are real people. And if what you're showing them is no good, no matter what you do with your strategy, it's not going to work. You have to also make sure that your targeting is good. You have to also make sure that the way that you've set up your ad is effective to get people to click it. And it's something that is in reality, not very difficult to do. And in fact, getting traffic to your store from a Facebook ad is probably one of the easiest things that you can do when you're on Shopify. The hard part is actually creating a product that somebody wants to buy. But that's a topic for another video. This post here is basically talking about the passive income that one can make on Redbubble that they cannot make on Shopify. And anytime I see someone say the words passive income, I cringe just a little bit, mainly because I think when beginners see that word, they envision themselves sitting on a beach somewhere on their laptop, drinking a fancy drink or something like that while their bank account is just growing and they're not doing anything to make it happen. The truth is, in my opinion, is that true passive income does does not exist. Anybody that gets to the point with Teespring or Amazon uh, where they are generating a lot of sales has put in a ton of work. They have uploaded hundreds of designs. They have spent hours researching things. They have even paid somebody to make the designs for them. They are just at a point now where the designs are out there and they are selling. My biggest case here is that the same effort that would be required in order to make that happen on one of these platforms, if you put that into learning Facebook ads and learning Shopify and mastering organic traffic from Instagram, if you put that same effort into that, you'd probably end up in a better spot than if you had put the same time and effort into Teespring and Amazon or Redbubble. My point being is that both options, whether you're going on Teespring and Redbubble and Merch by Amazon compared to Shopify, both strategies can work. It's just about the long-term potential success, in my opinion. So here's my main point with these two videos, right? I made this video that you're watching right now, and I made the other one where I was recommending Shopify last week. Basically, there are two strategies, right? You can upload a ton of designs to one of these platforms and then hope for some organic traffic to come to your store or your page or whatever they're called, listings, I think, and get people to buy from you that way. Or you could start your own Shopify store, build your brand, focus on growing a community on Instagram and then scale with Facebook ads. If you're using Teespring, Amazon or Redbubble, there's essentially no startup cost because those places do not have a monthly fee where Shopify does have a $29 a month minimum to actually use the platform. If you're going to use Redbubble or one of those platforms, what you would do is immediately start trying to make as many designs as possible. You would then upload them to all of those platforms and just hope that you're going to get organic traffic coming to your listings. With Shopify, the strategy would be to pick a passionate niche, make five or so products that you think are awesome and begin trying to sell them with Facebook ads. Simultaneously, you could create an Instagram account and begin posting photos and videos that people in your niche would like. And then over time, sprinkle in photos of some of the products you sell. And if you put the link in your bio, people are going to click it and come to your store. And
and fingers crossed they're going to buy from you. Of course, this is a super simplified breakdown. And really, this just comes from me assessing the print on demand community at large and just the amount of successful sellers that I see on Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, Teespring, compared to those that I have seen that have been able to create profitable brands on Shopify is vastly different. Honestly, the only people that I see making any sort of money on Redbubble or Merch by Amazon are those that are actually making YouTube videos or teaching people how to do it. I don't see many beginners actually starting Redbubble or Merch by Amazon or Teespring that are making great money. In contrast, I see a lot of people that are starting a Shopify print on demand store and they're turning it into something that can actually provide them with quote unquote passive income. When it comes down to it, if you get to the point where you have hundreds of designs on Redbubble or Teespring or Amazon and they are selling, I think a better scenario for you would be if you invested the time into learning how to do Facebook ads, building your Shopify print on demand store and having your brand on Instagram, I think that would be a better long term goal. It really just comes down to how much effort you want to put into this and what skills you are willing to master. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think if you agree or if you hate me. Okay, bye.